Hi, I'm Dr. William Harper, and thanks for joining me today. You may have heard of sleep apnea. You may have sleep apnea. You probably know somebody who has sleep apnea, whether you realize it or not. What is sleep apnea? Sleep apnea, in its most basic sense, is not breathing at night. You may stop breathing for a few seconds. You may stop breathing for a few minutes, every hour, every night. As you can imagine, this is not good rest. In fact, your body needs oxygen to rest, to recover. If you're not getting enough oxygen in, it's a problem. It can be life-threatening. Sleep apnea is related to arrhythmias, heart attacks, strokes, um, diabetes, depression, all kinds of very, very, very bad things. A lot of people walk around and don't even realize they have it. What is my role in sleep apnea? Well, we work closely with the physicians. Physicians refer patients to us to make a dental device. And I'm going to talk in a minute about why we make that device. Let me talk about why physicians refer to us. First thing is, we respect physicians and their ability to make the medical diagnosis that is necessary for sleep apnea. What this means is, the medical doctor does the evaluation, the medical doctor conducts a sleep study, the medical doctor reviews a sleep study, the medical doctor makes the medical diagnosis. There are some colleagues in the dental field that believe that I should be doing that part. That is not what I want to do. It is the medical physicians who've been especially training to diagnose sleep apnea. And in fact, it needs to be diagnosed properly because there are some similar conditions that are actually more deadly than sleep apnea. So that's why they send us a lot of patients. Now, why do we make appliances, dental appliances for sleep apnea? Well, CPAP is a machine that helps people breathe at night, but a lot of patients, maybe up to 50% of patients cannot use CPAP or don't use it every night or don't use it for the number of hours they need. It could be the tubes are getting in the way. It could be the masks get in the way, the headgear. It could be they just don't want to mess with it. Those patients still need treatment. Physicians send them over. We make an appliance to fit in their mouth. Other situations that can occur are, let's say a patient is using CPAP very successfully, but they want to go camping. They may not have an adequate power supply or they may not want to rely on their power supply. Or I have patients who spend a lot of time on boats. Uh, they may be worried about their power supply there. We'll make them an appliance as a backup. Because having an appliance is better than having nothing. A third reason that people have appliances made is their CPAP may be working great, but they need actually additional help with combined treatment. That is CPAP and a dental appliance. Now, truth be known, I did not get into sleep apnea for a while because of this. I treated TMJ, and I treated TMJ for a long time. I saw a lot of patients who have TMJ problems. They grind their teeth. They clench their teeth. Uh, a lot of these patients, I was doing full mouth rehabilitations because they ground their teeth down. Well, the mouth, speak, and chewing, it all starts with the joint. And so you have to know about the joint and if they had pain, we want to get their pain taken care of. But I was actually seeing patients who had dental appliances being made by somebody else, other dentists, and they were having TMJ problems, the same problems I was trying to help other patients get rid of. The appliance was causing TMJ issues. It was causing tooth movement, causing bite changes, causing speech changes. These are all problems that exist with these appliances, and I thought to myself, we need to figure this out. I called the dentist who made them, I called the physician who made them, they pretty much said, we don't know what to do, we don't have an answer, that's just what the appliance has to do. Well, that didn't sit with me. Until I found a mentor in a study club that I could be a part of, that understands TMJ and understands sleep apnea, we know how to minimize problems that come with the appliances. We can't guarantee preventing all of them, but we can really minimize these problems and have a lot of success. Together, my mentor has treated 5,000 patients for sleep apnea with appliances. Uh, our study club has probably treated 10,000 more patients with sleep appliances. So I borrow all of their knowledge all the time. If there's a question, if there's a problem, if there's some new complication we need to avoid, we talk about it. We have systems in place to minimize the problems. When I figured all this out, we started treating sleep apnea. One additional aspect of study club is sleep apnea is becoming more and more common, more common diagnosis. 
So guidelines are always changing. Our study club is on top of these guidelines. Now, a few questions people have about dental sleep appliances. Uh, one is, what if you have a dental sleep appliance and you already have a TMJ problem because of it? Or your teeth are moving or shifting, or your bite's changed, or your speech has changed. What to do? Well, ASAP, as soon as you can, get that evaluated. It may get a whole lot worse than it is now. It needs to be evaluated by somebody who's trained in TMJ, occlusion, somebody who does a little more complex dentistry. Now, what if you think you can't wear a dental appliance? Well, with TMJ and all the years I treated it, I learned if you make a custom fitted appliance, there's not one appliance for everybody, but there's different custom fitted appliances that suit different people's needs. We can generally find something comfortable for you to wear. We have at our disposal at least six appliances at any one time we're using, but we know about a whole lot more. So in general, there's an appliance we're going to be able to find that's comfortable for you. And remember, an appliance is better than nothing. Sleep apnea is very dangerous. If you can't wear CPAP, let's talk about an appliance. And last, how often should an appliance be replaced? Well, about every five years, but this is important. Whoever made the appliance for you needs to see you at least once a year. Make sure the appliance is still working, see if it needs to be adjusted, and you need to make sure you're seeing the dental sleep medicine physician at least once a year or more frequently if they want you to. Remember, this is a medical diagnosis. It's not being cured. It's being managed, and it can change. So those follow-ups are very important. That's another reason why so many physicians send referrals to our office, because we send the patient back to the physician to make sure they're followed up correctly. If you have any questions, please feel free to give my office a call. Thanks for your time today. I'm Dr. William Harper, and we'll see you next session.